Hi guys, welcome back to Simply Learn. In our previous video, we learned about React.js components in detail. And now, moving ahead, let's learn about another striking feature of React.js called props. Props, short for properties, allow the user to pass arguments or data to components. A parent component can pass additional information to its children using props. Properties help make components more dynamic. Props are passed to components in the way similar to that of HTML track attributes. Now we'll look at this a little later in the video. Props in a component are read only and cannot be changed. One thing to remember is that props are sent by the parent to the children components. Hence the children components cannot make any changes to these props. Now that we've learned about props in brief, let's go ahead and create our application using props. If you're new to this tutorial, I suggest you go to the React installation and React components video on our channel. So back in my code editor, that is VS Code, I've opened a folder called React Props. And now I'm going to create a component, a class component, and I'll call it class props. Dot js. So let's create the class component. I give RCE the snippet. And here I display a message saying an h1 tag basically. All right. Now let me get rid of export here and import it in my app.js main component. Here I say import class props. All right. Now we define the class component in our render method. Let's say, all right. Now, if we go back to the browser, you see, hello learners, welcome to Simply Learn. Now, let's say we want to individually welcome every student. Instead of retyping the message for everybody, we can pass their names as props. Now, let's see how to do that. Now, we pass the name as a property from the main component that is app.js to the child component and render this onto the browser. So, let's do that. So, here, while I'm defining my child component, I say name. I save it and here in my child component, instead of learners, I say, I use the keyword this dot props dot name. Let me save it. And if you look at the browser, we'll have hello learner one, welcome to simply learn. Now let's go ahead and welcome learner two and learner three. So I again say class props name equals learner two. All right, so if we save and look at the browser, we'll have all the three learners displayed on the browser. We can also pass multiple props to the child component. Now say for example, we want to welcome the student from a particular place. So we say welcome learner one from place X. So I can here define another property, say place and say place. Similarly, I can do it for the rest too. Say place y. Now let's go back to our class props.js component and here say hello learner one from this dot props dot place. Let me save it. And if you look at the browser now, we have hello learner one from place x, place y, and place z. We can also display whatever we want between the opening and closing tags when invoking a component. Now this is facilitated using props.children reserved keyword. Now let me explain to you how it's done with an example. Here, let's split the self and closing tag into an opening and a closing tag. And in between them, let me display a message within the paragraph tag. Let me say, and in my child component, after my h1 tag, let me use a paragraph tag. And here, let's use the reserved keyword, this.props.children. So let's save it. And now if you look at the browser, you can here see the message displayed child component. So props.children can be used when components do not know about their children ahead of time. This is commonly seen in components like sidebar and dialog that represent generic boxes. So let's go ahead and create a button tag and check again. So here I'll split it and add a button tag and say click. And let's check our browser. Here we go. 
we get the output as expected. All right, we saw the usage of props for class components. Similarly, we can use it for functional components. So let's go ahead and create a functional component. Let me call it, I say import react from react. And then I say function, function props. And here I return an h3 tag. I say this is functional component and I'll return another h3 tag saying hello learner. So let me save this and let's export it. Export default function props and import it in our app.js again. Import function prop from function prop and here in our render method let's define it let me call function prop name let me give learner 4 and place place say a let me close it and back in our functional component instead of learner I say props dot name let me save it now if you look at our browser it gives us an error it says props is not defined so let's go back to our code editor and pass props here to our functional component also let me define hello props dot name from props dot place let me enclose it within the div tag here let me save it. And now if you look at our browser, here we go. We get the output as expected. With this, we've reached the end of the video. In our upcoming video, you'll learn more about props and how they're used. So watch out for that. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.